parts to, tonight, to tonight's meeting. Uh, the first part is an information session that's the more informal part of the night. Uh, Allie will give a quick PowerPoint presentation to highlight what it is that EMC Ashtabula is requesting of us and talk about our review process and public participation and, and so forth. Uh, when she's done with the PowerPoint, we'll open the floor to some questions for 15, 20 minutes and try to answer any questions you might have prior to going into the second part of our meeting, which is the important part for us. That's the public hearing, and that's when we, we shut up and we get your comments on the record. Uh, you'll each have five minutes to come on up, say whatever you want to say about this particular action and proposal. We'll get that on the record, and it will become part of our overall public record for this site and for this permit review. So EMC, to give you a little background, it was formerly known as Elkham Metals Company, and it's on the old area that um, was once Union Carbide. Uh, they operated a smelting operation producing lime, calcium carbide, and um, they ceased operations completely in March of 2008. So their current operations is warehousing, storage, and some decommissioning activities. They have um, ponds out there that they used back prior when they were operating to discharge um, and treat their process wastewater, and that's also how Union Carbide operated, and you can see those ponds from a satellite map I'll show you. And that's some of the decommissioning activities um, that is going on out there. The reason why AMC is requesting the mercury variance. So due to difficulty in meeting the 1.3 part per trillion mercury limit, EMC is requesting a variance. And it's cost prohibitive to meet the mercury standard through treatment alone. So there's estimates based on credible sources that cost tens of millions of dollars per pound to remove mercury. So a variance is requested and it's allowed under our Ohio administration code. Let me ask you one last question. I don't want to dominate the conversation here. Is every plant on Lake Road, Middle Road, and State Road going to come before us ask for the same variance or the same exception? Several already have. Is it just tracking the progress of how they are monitoring, or does it actually help you later identify where it's coming from, on property, off property, yes. stuff that would help the Ohio EPA down the road. We would we would talk to our legal folks and write a referral to penalize the facility. You mean it's obviously cheaper for them to not abide by the laws because it takes a while for them even to be given a penalty or, or, or to pay something when it's tens of millions of dollars to clean up the mercury. So I just I don't see the incentive first of all, and. Um, the other things are a bit mysterious to me. Yep. Now, what is, well. what is, so they, they're paying no fine before, they've gotten, granted the variance, um, and in five, is it five years, they have to solve the problem, figure out the problem? They, have to, make, they have to make progress towards the problem, but meeting a 12 annual average. A part, they have to meet that 12 parts per the purpose of this public hearing is to accept comments on the official record regarding the mercury variance request and the potential impacts to Ohio's water resources. Ohio EPA published a public notice in local newspapers regarding the application, the hearing, and public comment period. This notice also was issued in Ohio EPA's weekly review, a publication that lists by county all agency activities and actions. To be included in the official record, you may testify this evening or submit written comments to Ohio EPA through January 24, 2017. Comments may be emailed to epa.dswcomments at epa.ohio.gov or sent via U.S. mail to Ohio EPA Division of Surface Water Attention Permits Processing Unit, P.O. Box 1049, Columbus, Ohio, 43216-1049. And both of those addresses are listed at the bottom of this evening's agenda, which is located at the registration table. Any written comments received after the comment period closes will be considered as time and circumstances permit, but will not be part of the official record. If you've brought along a written copy of your testimony, it's helpful if you can provide it to Ohio EPA's court reporter here with us tonight. After considering public comments and staff recommendations, Ohio EPA's director will decide to grant or deny the permit modification. Mercury that's coming, it's coming from the soil that was polluted years ago. 
I don't think any plant over there is adding any mercury to my knowledge. I could be wrong. But I think we need to uh, work with these people because it is helping clean up the area. I mean, these people aren't the ones that even put it there, as far as I know, unless I'm wrong. I think self-reporting it, it is absolutely <coughs> the wrong way to go completely. I mean, I don't, I think the EPA should own and operate, you know, the methods of monitoring the effluents from various industrial sources. I mean, how, uh, if, since there is no real incentive, um, you know, that's something that just seems very few companies blow the whistle on themselves. Uh, I would ask that you give them the variance because I want to see their cleanup project um, continue to progress. I think it's important for Ashtabula. I think we have to clean this property up. I think that the mercury that's coming off of that property might be coming from hot spots and by giving this permit, it's going to involve you to better understand, you know, the, the exact locations of that mercury and possibly mitigate the mercury to a better level than what is going to happen if they don't get the variance, if they had to, you know, go into court and fight it for 10 years or whatever and ultimately file bankruptcy because they couldn't afford that $10 million number. I think that um, this is probably the best path forward for us as neighbors to the EMC court.